This video is an introduction to Kylo. Kylo is an entirely open sourced data lake platform that will be publicly released in Q1 of 2017. It is currently in beta at many organizations internationally. Kylo's data processing and orchestration engine is built entirely on top of Apache Hadoop, Spark, and NiFi. The Kylo application provides features for enterprise users such as self-service data ingestion preparation, wrangling, metadata discovery, and an operations dashboard. Let's jump into the application and create our first feed. We will ingest user registration data, which comes in the form of flat files, from our fictitious website application into Hadoop and make the data accessible via Hive. Let's call our feed users and put it in the category online data. We are getting data from the file system, looking for a file called users in the directory var drop zone. Next, we need to define the destination table schema in Hive. I am going to upload a sample file and have the system parse that file and create the schema for me. Here's the schema that was parsed from that file. Let's go modify it. Once you're done modifying the schema, you can additionally add partitions to this table. Let's add a new partition using the registration date time field and partition it by year. Next, you can apply additional rules for how this data is processed into the destination table. First, you can decide what fields are sent to Elasticsearch for Google-like searching on your data. You can then apply standardization or cleansing rules to each of your fields. Let's go add one that will mask our credit card data, preserving the last four digits before that data is ingested. You can also apply validation rules to each of your fields. Let's go add one and ensure our IP address is valid. You can then choose a merge strategy for how this data is ingested, select a target format, and a block compression option. The next step allows us to define properties on this feed. Let's give it a data owner you can tag your data and additionally add any number of properties on this feed. Finally, let's schedule this feed. I can choose a timer or a cron expression. Let's choose timer and have it run every five seconds looking for that file. Let's go take a look at the run history of a similar feed to the one we just created. You can see here that Kylo automatically tracks the number of records processed, the number of valid records, and the number of records that failed validation. We can drill in to see the failed records and why they failed. Notice these rows did not pass the IP address validator. Kylo generates data profile statistics for each batch. Dozens of column statistics are automatically calculated, such as cardinality, min, max, histogram, etc. Profile statistics allow a data scientist to analyze and quickly characterize or qualify data. Kylo allows you to not only search your metadata catalog using freeform search, but also your data as well. Suppose I'm going to find all things with users. Or I might be interested in just the engineers. And then maybe just the engineers named Smith. Kylo's global search allows you to quickly filter and find specific data in the system.
I have data in my data lake that I wish to join together to create a new data set. Let's go create a new data feed and choose data transformation. The data I want to look at is event data and I want to group this event data by city. So I'm going to call my new feed events by city. And let's go put that in the category online data. Now let's go and find the tables I want to join. Let's add the events table and the venues table. And let's join the two together. Now let's select the columns we want for our resulting data set. Here we see our resulting data set. The data is automatically sampled and you can change that sample rate if you wish. Each column has a drop down that exposes some common transformations. The function bar above exposes many more functions that let you transform your data. Let's go add a new column, concatenate the venue city with the venue state. Let's go add one more function, grouping our data by city and state. Here we see the resulting data set we are looking for. Let's go ahead and schedule this as a feed. I'm going to just click through to schedule this. We'll make it run every day at 2 a.m. I'm in Apache NiFi, and I have a flow that will get data from a file system, a Kafka queue, or a database. It will then merge that content, and then upon success or failure, write that data to a file. I now want to create a template in NiFi, and then register that with Kylo so users can start creating a feed using this template. Let's select everything and create a new template in NiFi. And let's call this Kylo sample. Now let's go over to Kylo and register this template. Here in Kylo, you can see all the templates that are currently registered with the system. Let's click the plus to register our new template. There's two options. You can have Kylo look directly at NiFi and register a new template, or Kylo allows you to export and import templates along with their respective configurations. This is useful if you want to transfer templates between environments, for example, like moving from development to production. Let's choose Create from NiFi. First, we need to select the template. Let's find the Kylo sample template we just created. The next two screens allow you to define how this template will be rendered when creating a feed. Additionally, Kylo allows you to inject metadata into the template. Let's go see how this works. The first page here shows all the input processors and their properties. Let's go find the topic name associated with the Git Kafka processor. Let's choose to allow a user to supply a value when they define their feed. We can change how it's rendered using the drop down to the right. Let's go customize a few more properties. For the database, let's go choose to expose the database connection to the end user. For the file system, let's choose to allow the user to supply a file filter and the input directory. The next page is very similar, but it shows all the downstream processors and their properties. Let's go customize a few more. For the success processor, let's go change the output directory 
And suppose I want this to go to a directory of var, and then the feed category and the feed name. By clicking the dollar sign, it exposes all the metadata that Kylo has available to inject into this feed. Let's search for category and use the category system name. Let's do the same and find feed. And let's put this to a directory called success. Let's do the same for failure. In addition to injecting metadata from the feed, Kylo also allows you to inject environmental properties from a file and then reference these when registering the feed. This is useful if you have environmental specific properties that you want injected, which are different from, say, development to production. Let's go ahead and create a feed now using our template. Notice we have our Kylo sample template here. We'll give it a name, sample feed. We'll put it in the category online data. Now notice the various options we have. For Kafka, we expose the topic name. For the database, we expose the connection. And for the file system, we expose the filter and input directory. Let's go ahead and choose file system and change the file filter to be looking for a file called Kylo in the var drops on directory. And let's go and schedule this feed. Our feed was just created. But now let's go see what happened behind the scenes in NiFi. We have a process group called online data which relates to the category of online data. You'll see we have the newly created feed sample feed. Here we have our feed and because we chose file system, file system is active and the other two are disabled. If we look at the configuration, notice it's looking for our Kylo file. Additionally, if we look at the success processor, it injected the category name of online data and the feed name of sample feed into that directory. This was a quick introduction on how easy it is to create a template in NiFi and then register it in Kylo and start creating a feed using that template. Let's switch our hat to an IT operations user. Operations is responsible for monitoring the data lake and the health of data feeds. Kylo's operations dashboard provides key performance indicators shown here across the top. The most interesting one provides a health metric for the data feeds themselves. A healthy feed is one that is meeting service level agreements, has passed data quality verifications, and has had a successful run history. We can drill into a feed to view its performance and runs over time. Here you see a graph showing all the jobs that have been executed for this feed over time, grouped by status. Below the graph is a more detailed listing of each job execution. We can drill into a particular run to see operational metadata and troubleshoot problems. A job is comprised of a series of job parameters, and as the job executes, it goes through a series of steps. Each step will capture key operational metadata. You can click through each step to view the data that was captured. If an exception were to occur during an execution, a message would be displayed indicating the failure. Kyla also provides a charting framework to help you analyze your data. Here you can see a chart showing the average duration each feed took over time. You can drag and drop attributes onto the chart 
filter the chart to help analyze your data. Kylo also allows you to monitor services within your data lake. Should a service become unhealthy, you can click into that service and identify what went wrong. An IT operations user can then correlate service health with feed health and help troubleshoot when feeds become unhealthy. In the video, we saw just a few of the features of Kylo. One takeaway was the ability for business end users to quickly ingest and prepare data through a simple, guided user interface. Typically, in Hadoop, these routine activities require software engineers and can take weeks between releases. For more information, please visit the Think Big Analytics website at httpthinkbiganalytics.com. Thank you.